Bowman behind him. Alex Bowman did not get a good restart. I felt like the race this week was not actually the main focus point. There was a lot of news around NASCAR uh, this week, and it kind of put a little cloud over the race. But the race at Pocono, let's see how it went. Let's talk about it. And we'll talk about the future stuff later on this week. Already before the race even started, there were some major news with qualifying and tech. 13 cars failed uh, post-qualifying inspection. Kevin Harvick failed it three times, so his uh, car chief was ejected. But it is what it is. Uh, the teams are always going to try to push the limits, and this is NASCAR's way of just kind of punishing them a little bit. You know, if you fail post-qualifying inspection, you don't get your time to stand. So guys like Harvick, guys like Jimmy, I think five of the cars that qualified in the top seven failed post-qualifying inspection, so they all had to go to the back. But Kevin Harvick was the main one to watch, also Kyle Busch and goes, guys like that. But Harvick was the main one, and he flew through the field stage one. It was... It was ridiculous how fast he was. No one was surprised. Uh, that just is the competition gap, which uh, I think I should, I'll probably get into later on this week. There were some few comments that pa uh, Parker Kligerman said about the competition gap that really intrigued me. So um, we'll probably get into that later this week. But it was just, it was kind of cool to see how much faster he was. Like he, especially in the middle of turn one. I mean, that car just turns in the center of the corner. He can gas that thing up and just go. Uh, it made no sense to me how, how much quicker he is. Um, but it is what it is. He was able to get all the way up to the top five at the end of the stage. It went green the entire way. So he literally went from the back to the front uh, without, you know, just having any cautions to help him. So that was crazy. Chase Elliott was the uh, random guy. Yeah, Chase Elliott. Oh, two weeks in a row I'm saying this as a uh, Chase Elliott supporter. Chase Elliott wins stage one somehow. Don't, don't even know how. It's just... I don't get that team sometimes. I don't get Hendrick most of the time. So they just randomly show up at a track that they have no business having speed, and they have speed. It doesn't make sense to me. But I was happy, obviously. I trolled a little bit on Twitter, but I was happy that uh, Chase was able to show some speed. Knew it wasn't going to last, though, because as we go into stage two, you know Harvick is just, he's right there. He's coming. Gets into the lead, and Harvick would win stage two. Nothing really happened here other than strategy stuff. Uh, there was a simple strategy if you wanted a pit, uh, with three laps to go and try to stay on the lead lap. Guys like Eric Jones and Martin Truex Jr. did that. Um, so they would be able to start the final stage in good, good position. Also, Kyle Busch did that. And uh, m many of the JGR cars, I think all four JGR cars actually did it. Busch, Suarez, who actually qualified on pole. Can't believe I mentioned him yet, but Suarez did it. Hamlin did it. Uh, and yeah, so that was an interesting move. At the end of that stage... Elliott was running second, and uh, actually was right behind Kyle Busch. He was probably running third behind Kyle Busch. I thought he should have pitted. I was I was screaming Augustus in a pit. However, the nine team is in a different scenario than those guys because they need the points for the stage points just to help them get into the playoffs. But still, I would have went for the win. I don't think that was the right call, and I do think that actually lost them ra the race there, was not pitting there, because once you had to restart stage three, Elliott went from third back to around sixth. Then you had guys like Kyle Busch, Eric Jones. These aren't slouches. You know, they're not slow cars in front of you. These are fast JGR cars. And I think Gustafson threw the race there away. Uh, I, I think maybe if Chase would have just gotten a little bit more track position, he would have had a better chance. But I really do think Gustafson threw it away there. I understand wanting the stage points. I completely get it. But I don't give a shit about the stage points. If I'm a crew chief, I don't care. I'm, what, 90 points ahead of the cut line? I want to win a race. I'm willing to sacrifice nine points if it means putting myself in a better position to win the race. That's what I would have done. That's what Adam Stevens did as Kyle Busch because they were able to win races earlier in the season and, and take that risk. But I don't even think it's a risk. I think it's the smart move. I would have done it if I were them. Let's get back to the race now. Stage three was lively, to say the least. Kevin Harvick was in the back due to pit road issues, uh, but he was able to get back, I think, around fifth to sixth place, trying to work his way up through the field. And then Brad Keselowski brought out a caution with a cut left rear tire. I don't know if this had anything to do with Larson getting it to him a little bit earlier with a little bit of a bump and getting him out of the groove. Harvick goes down pit road. Harvick has an incident with Eric Amarola, and Almirola's right front, Harvick's left rear, get a little bit dented up. And with the cars being so aero-sensitive, if you touch anything on that right front or the right or left rear, you gotta you got to come in and fix it in case there's a tire rub or something. So Harvick had to come back down pit road, and he had to restart around 30th. You would think his race is probably done here, but it'd be interesting to see if he, he could get back up towards the front. Guys up front, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, that's your top three. Uh, Eric Jones is up there. So the JGR cars that did that pit strategy, along with Truex, 
if you noticed, late in the race, they were running 1, 2, 4, 5, and Truex was around there as well. I think Hamlin was, like, 6th. They were all up there. I can't stress enough how disappointed I was, not in Elliott, but also Harvick, and how disappointed I was that they didn't pit at the end of Stage 3. Because the, the, all those JGR teams, they had that all planned. Once you get back in a 6th and 7th position, it's it's you're risking a lot. It's hard to pass. It's really hard to pass. And I just... I don't know. I, that's bothering me as I'm making this. It's just, it bothers me that I just, I don't value the stage win as much as these teams seem to. I don't think it's as important. I think going for the win's more important. And if I, I think Kevin Harvick, if he was able to pit there at the end of stage two, never know. He doesn't get put back in the traffic. Maybe the pit road incident doesn't happen because he's a little bit further up in the field. It's, I mean, it's all hypothetical. I just, I don't know. I try, I, it bothers me, man. But anyways, you guys know who's running up front. Uh, and then the green flag goes out. They're going through the restart. It kind of seems like everything is basically done. Kyle Busch is leading the race with like five laps to go. It's pretty much a done deal. And then, uh, yeah, Bubba Wallace loses his brakes. Goes into the grass and into the wall hard. Very similar to uh, Jimmy Johnson either last year or two years ago. I don't know exactly where which year it was. Um, but similar to Jimmy Johnson... Brought back memories of Gordon as well from 2006, but luckily Bubba was okay. Good cars, good safety. Well, that's the one part I like about this car is obviously the safety. Yeah, you, know, you won't hear me calling Gen 6 good most of the time, but the safety of the cars is, is very good. The safety barrier, everything worked, uh, and hopefully he'll be streaming on Twitch playing some PUBG with a sworn, swollen up ankle or whatever it is, uh, swollen up foot, but it is what it is. He was able to survive the wreck, uh, and it is what it is. You know, when you lose brakes entering turn one, entering 200 plus miles per hour, uh, he know he said in his post race interview he should have stayed up against the wall, but when you have when you realize you have no brakes, <laughs> going 200 miles per hour, uh, you don't think like you would normally think. <laughs> it's all in, you just try to do something. So he turned left, tried to slow the car down, going through the grass, hard hit. Glad he's okay. This causes a restart with three laps to go, where Suarez was on the inside, Kyle Busch was the leader, and Suarez had. He, he had good restarts. The thing about Pocono is the straightaway is so long that if you could time the restart right, you can side draft and stay with that lead car. It happened pretty much all race that the front two were side by side. So what I was urging Suarez to do at this moment was to be a little bit more aggressive than he probably should. Uh, and if he was side by side, if he was door to door, if he wasn't, then obviously you can't. But if he was door to door, equal with Kyle Busch entering turn one, I would have forced him up the track and just drove a little bit high up, even if that does allow the bottom lane to come through. If you are able to get in that upper lane heading into the tunnel turn, you can pinch down and still be in a pretty good position. You want to be in that second lane late on these restarts. So I would have done it, um, but heading into the restart, first restart, he doesn't do it because he's not door to door with them. So he was about here. He wasn't here, he was here. So you can't do it when you're there and Kyle Busch would obviously clear, but Eric Amrola would have an incident in turn one and uh, with a cut tire and he would spin out and cause a caution. So this brings it back to the final restart. And I want to analyze this final restart because again, I really think if Suarez had the opportunity, he could have drove him up. But this was different circumstances. So when, when you're planning a restart, you have about five minutes to plan a restart in your head when you're under caution. You're just pacing. You're thinking about what I can do. You're thinking, can I judge, uh, judge his jump a little bit? So Suarez is just trying to judge the jump. He's just trying to stay equal with Kyle Busch. It's not about getting ahead of him. It's about equal. If you can stay equal, you can try something in turn one. Now, this restart was very interesting due to a couple of reasons. You can see right here at the start finish line, he's side by side. And the most important thing that I think his spotter should have been telling him is Bush has no help and Suarez does have help. He has his teammate in Eric Jones right behind him. As we enter turn one, you can see here he's getting the pull. Now, Kyle Busch is going to side draft him. But if Eric Jones stays behind Daniel Suarez, he's going to be able to then side draft Kyle Busch, get Suarez a little bit of ahead, but maybe not clear. We wouldn't know if he was going to be able to clear or not, but this is the big move when Eric Jones takes it three wide. When that happens, it's a done deal. Those two cars on the bottom are not going to be able to maintain like Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch is just able to arc it in and drive right around him. It's really hard to say what Eric Jones should have done. I mean, it's easy to say it now, but it's really hard to do when you're in that position because Eric Jones is seeing the light of the end of the tunnel when he's getting that run on Suarez and his spotter is also telling him that Bush has no help so he's thinking to himself if I take it three wide I'm able to get a good run maybe I can get clear of both of them but I think the best move for Eric Jones would have been to shove Suarez but 
you never know if he would have maybe shoved Suarez too much to get him clear. The one thing Jones needed to happen was he needed Suarez to get sucked around by Kyle Busch a little bit if Kyle Busch was on the outside. If that would have happened, it would have opened up the lane for Eric Jones. I think that's what he should have done. But again, when you're in the heat of the moment, you do what you think is best at that moment, and you might think what's better later on. So it, it, is, it is what it is, really. Uh, obviously, Air Jones and Suarez are still young drivers. They're, they're still pretty inexperienced, so they're going to learn as they go on, and Kyle Busch is a veteran and probably the one, one of the best to do it, so he knows how to win these races. It is what it is. Like I said, it's, it's a really intriguing restart to me because I think there's a lot of elements of racing here that I really like. Just instant decision making that you have to make entering turn one at Pocono which is not like a full throttle corner you have to still back up the corner a little bit shift at the right time get the good run coming out of the corner and doing this all with dirty air all around you and other cars and a heat cycle on the tire so definitely a really interesting restart I just think Jones should have pushed Suarez if Jones pushes Suarez and get some clear, I think Suarez wins the race. If Jones pushes Suarez and doesn't get him clear, I think Jones wins the race because Suarez will get sucked around, move Kyle Busch up the track a little bit, and Jones will be able to go through that gap. I, if, I don't think in any scenario does Kyle Busch win that race if Jones pushes Suarez because he would have lost too much time being in the outside lane. So it was just, it is what it is. I kind of, you know, I kind of hoped Suarez would probably pull it out. I, I kind of feel bad for Daniel. He did everything right those last two restarts. Uh, he definitely proved a lot to me. I, I don't think Suarez is the utmost talented driver, like, compared to Larson or Christopher Bell or guys like that. But Suarez definitely has talent. He's a champion. And I want to see him in these positions more. And I think Suarez did a great job here. It's just one thing didn't go his way, and that's what you need. You need a lot of things to go your way to win these races. One little factor doesn't go his way and his teammate not giving him that push doesn't win the race. From that moment on, Kyle Busch is able to pull away and win the race. Not really a big surprise after that turn one. Uh, so it was, a, it was a good finish, I would say. Definitely a really intriguing restart. Uh, I don't know if it was just me or if I guess Dirty Air was even more prevalent today than the first Pocono race. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember the first Pocono race as well, but it definitely looked like clean air was massive this race. There was moments where William Byron was up towards the front uh, with old tires and was able to hold on for five to six laps, holding off Kyle Busch, holding off Eric Jones, and that's just weird because William Byron was running outside the top 15 all race. So definitely an intriguing race, definitely intriguing factors, uh, and it was for the news that was going on in the week, it was a good race to get the spotlight out of that news I would say um, so a solid race probably a 7 out of 10 let's go to the race results Kyle Busch Daniel Suarez Alex Bowman with his I think that's his career best finish I actually don't know I, I don't want to say it is but I'm not exactly sure he gets a third place for Hendrick Kevin Harvick gets into fourth I mean that, that car was stupid fast he was able to get to fourth after having trouble on pit road it makes no sense to me how he was that good but uh, that, that car is just insane. Uh, Eric Jones in fifth. William Byron gets a sixth place finish. Chase Elliott gets a seventh place finish. Ryan Newman, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin round out your top ten. Obviously very noticeable stuff here. Hendrick Motorsports, third, sixth, and seventh. They definitely ran better. Chase Elliott d doesn't deserve to finish seventh. He deserved to finish in the top three. But he finished the seventh because he had to restart in that third place on the inside line. Which I think is by far the worst place to restart at Pocono is if you're on the inside behind someone else. Yeah, not good place, but he got in a little bit of trouble there. Uh, William Byron led a few laps. He did very well. I am, keep telling you guys, don't look at William Byron's results, even though when he runs well, I really want to be like, yeah, William Byron, right? But still don't look at his results yet. He, he's so talented that, like, the sixth place doesn't impress me. Like, I, I bet it probably doesn't impress him either. He's, he's happy he finished sixth, but he should probably expect it. You know what I mean? Because... He is that talented, and I know he's that talented. When Hendrick give him the cars to work with, and he learns a little bit more, he will, he'll will he show up. So, good finish for him. Still not putting any pressure on the guy. I don't care if he finished 6th. Don't care if he finished 36th. I'm not putting any pressure on him. Alex Bowman obviously had a good run as well. He, did, he ran well. I think he was the second best Hendrick car compared to Chase Elliott. Uh, and Daniel Suarez as well, with probably the, the drive of his career qualifying well he was on pole due to the tech failures but he also ran well he was a top five car he, he did very well this race so proud of daniel suarez touched him already earlier proud of him and then the rest of the results were just crazy it, it's not really 
good to say like where someone finished is where they ran because those last restarts they're just so crazy that everyone goes everywhere so you can see the rest of the results the guys who finished back here they never really were up towards the front um, but with the craziness that ensued they finished where they finished that's pretty much it for Pocono another one of the quote-unquote big three I don't like saying it because I swear they push that phrase down my throat every single week through TV and it is just getting annoying. I just don't want to hear big three anymore. Just call it like it is. Kyle Busch, Truex, Harvick, the three good cars. Don't always be like, oh, the big three is, is just let him race. But Kyle Busch wins. I think he, that's his 11th win in 36 races, dating back to last July. So 11 wins in 36 races, almost a third of the schedule is just nuts. Uh, so that's good for him. It was a solid race. 7.58 out of 10. And next week we go to Watkins Glen. I'm really excited about that because I like my road courses, but expect the four, the 78 and the 18 uh, to run well there because that's just how the equipment is. Um, talk about that in a future video. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, comment down below, follow me on Twitter if you're not already. And I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Watkins Glen is up next. We'll make some a couple of videos midweek to talk about the future uh, that you guys have already seen probably. And I'll give my opinions on that. Can't wait for it. So I'll see you guys later. Peace. I can't change. Even if I try, even if I wanted to, and I can't change. Even if I try, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm.